All right, my friends, here we go. Another new product and new tools video. I was at the Journal of Light Construction Show not too long ago, and I saw a couple really cool things that we have here today. And I also had a few people send me some stuff that I was like, this is neat. We need to talk about this. Today's build show, new products and new tools. Let's get going. Okay, y'all, before we get going on this toilet, I actually want to back up a hair to make sure that you realize that, believe it or not, there's an entire organization that does nothing but drop fake poop into toilets to see how well they flush. And as I was getting ready for this video, I, I familiarized myself with this thing called map testing. And I found a couple videos on their website that are both informative and hilarious. Let's check into this real quick. So first off, this is where we came from. If you're old enough to remember the big toilet tanks, the ones back here that would hold multiple, like four or five gallons, they actually didn't always flush very well. And let's check this video out. The people have in their homes currently with the certification media. Our 20 sponges. I love the background music. Wads of paper. <laughs> Drop randomly in. So this sponges. is the old style testing he's doing. Back then all they did is, was sponges and a little bit of random paper and they would see what these toilets would flush. We'll this, toilet this is an old video. This is at least 10 years ago. One little sponge left. If you remember, I said they were allowed to leave six. So according to the certification media, that would be a pretty successful toilet. So he said earlier in the video that the old toilet testing, like in the 90s, toilets, these big toilets with big tanks, they had to flush a certain number of sponges and paper. And as long as they flushed uh, 22 out of the 28, I think it was, pieces of uh, sponge in the toilet, it was a passing grade. Now, of course, if there's still junk in your toilet, it's not considered a passing grade for you and I. But this map testing, which has been around for at least a decade now or more, check out what they do. But of course, to get realistic results, you have to use a realistic media. Since we couldn't really get the real thing, we decided to use this. Soybean paste. <laughs> Each test specimen, as we call it, is 50 grams of soybean paste. It's encased in a thin latex membrane that allows us to reuse it. What else is made from a thin latex membrane that looks like that? Reuse it over and over again and yet it adds no stability or structural support to the waste. An average person will put out slightly less than three of these at each turn. I love the laugh so track they got out of this, this video too, isn't that hilarious? 50 grams, that's the minimum amount that a toilet has to pass to meet our certification. We have what we call our really sophisticated drop guide over the toilet. That's uh, to simulate the human condition and make sure that the media is put into the bowl in the proper orientation. So there's 250 grams, this is the minimum. This is a toilet that just simply excelled at passing the test media for the certification agencies. Now we'll see how it does. Clog the toilet, it wouldn't even flush it. And that's a three and a half gallon toilet too. <laughs> It. Still plugged. Oh man, what a weird job. So now let's look at, at a different type of toilet. This is an efficient six liter that we rated very high in our testing. Still the kind Again, of normal this is today, 1.6 is grams. This is what the minimum is to flush. I'm gonna put all of this, 1,000 grams in this toilet. Four times Okay, let me pause for a second. When you look at toilet data sheets, in particular, I really like uh, when Niagara, uh, which is this toilet right here, puts a data sheet out. They say how many grams at MAP uh, it puts out. And this this one says MAP score 1,000 grams. This is what they're talking about is this guy right here and, and what he's putting that in. Times our minimum, over two pounds. Two pounds of fake poop. The, media, the bowl is so full that some of the media is not even That's in the water. legitimately gross. And here we go. Not bad. Isn't that crazy? It flushed the whole thing down. There it is, a thousand grams. 
<laughs> the audience is like. <laughs> okay, so what's crazy is this map, what is it, map-testing.com. They've been doing this for years. They have all the manufacturers and all the specific toilets on there. So don't just go to the showroom and pick a toilet out. Pick the toilet you think you might like, uh, and then go to this website and check it out. And that's where this comes in, which I think is really interesting. Uh, I used a different version of a Niagara about 10 years ago at my in-law's house. They needed a basement uh, toilet replaced. And I had seen these guys talked about at all the green building seminars because they had uh, what I thought was really cool as a high water spot. Now, I didn't know how they got that high water spot in a low flush, uh, but I figured it out in this video right here. Let's see if I can get to it. Okay, so check this video out right here. It's a pressure assist, and it's kind of hard to understand, but basically they've got a tube running from the trap up to the tank, and it's this right here, which I thought was genius. Somehow they figured out how to only flush with 0.8 gallons here, but to have a higher water spot. So the water spot, meaning the, the level of the toilet, feels like a full size, you know, 1.6 gallon toilet, but it's only flushing 0.8. And if you look up Niagara as a brand uh, and just look at all their toilets on that MAP testing website, every single one of these, as far as I could tell, uh, flushes 1,000 grams or better. So pretty cool. This happens to be the Niagara Shadow. Uh, and I had a different Niagara at my in-law's house for over 10 years without a single problem. So uh, that I thought would be a good intro to, uh, to talk toilets. Okay, next up, let's go from uh, plumbing to roofing. Let's talk about the Permaboot. Uh, I had no idea this product existed. Uh, and one of my builder buddies told me about this. This is a retrofit to fix an existing leak in a roof where you've got a roof jack that the EPDM or the rubber collar has degraded in the sun. You know, PVC, extremely durable. You're never gonna see PVC go bad from sun exposure. But the rubber or whatever the gasket is on the top of your roof jack, as the sun's rays hit that over the years, that's gonna go bad and has caused a lot of leaks in houses. So check this out. This is an easy solution that can be retrofitted. You could even as a homeowner do this. Um, and this basically slides over and with some gravity, uh, you know, with a good shingling action, you can basically waterproof an old one, an old roof jack that's currently been leaking. The other cool thing about these is they come uh, with everything you need to do multiple sizes. So you might have a two inch, a two and a half, or a three inch vent pipe. Now you don't have to get the right size roof jack to replace it. And there's really not a whole lot to it. Very, very simple process, the permaboot. Next up, let me talk to you about this product. I got a chance to go out to California uh, and meet these guys. Uh, I did a video for them, I don't know, a year or more ago at my house. Uh, this is Eric's Manufacturing, and this is their Titan outlet. And I put these on my house, and apparently that video just blew things up for them. They got crazy busy. And so they brought me out not too long ago to check out their manufacturing operation. By the way, family-owned company. The dad actually invented the uh, Titan outlet. Unfortunately, dad's passed away now, but the, uh, the boys and mom are still running a great family-run operation. But this is a pretty cool innovation. Now they've got a two-piece version of their Titan outlet. So this could be used in a retrofit situation. I use the new construction one piece at my house. This is a game changer. I am really impressed by this product. Uh, they of course also make a PVC uh, boot for your line set to keep your insulation from going bad uh, over time from the sun's rays. But with this two piece model that you put together on site uh, on an existing HVAC line set and then screw it together. Man, that is really, really nice. That is impressive. Now, they've gotten busy with this model as well, but my understanding is they've ramped up stock. I'll put a link in the description below. I think every new construction house should have one of these. And if you're retrofitting or doing anything to your house on an existing home, now you've got a solution from them as well that looks nice, is gonna seal really well with this gasket, and is gonna keep your insulation on your Freon lines from degrading over time. Okay, next, on, a, on the tool side, you saw that my little uh, Milwaukee uh, screw gun here has a light on it. We've been doing that for 
a long, long time. But check this out. I've never seen this before. DeWalt now has a tape measure with a light on it. What a genius idea. It's got a little USB port right here to uh, charge it. Internal battery, I would hope that battery's gonna last for a while, but what a great idea. How many times have you been in uh, dark spots in a closet for measuring base, somewhere you can't see super well, and now you've got a light to see what that tape measure actually says. I can't imagine this is very expensive. I don't know the retail price, um, but I do know that these DeWalt tapes have a good reputation for toughness. Uh, I looked at some reviews online for the non-LED version and people absolutely flip for this. I've not owned one before, but I'm excited to put this in my truck and make this my, my newest tape measure. And while we're on tools, uh, Crescent sent me a brand new nut driver set called the Bolt Biter. If you've not seen these before, these are pretty cool because they have kind of a uh, half moon shaped design so that you can not only use these on uh, brand new bolts, but a worn bolt or a bolt that maybe has been slightly stripped, this will still bite on it. That is pretty cool. I think this is a great addition to your tool chest. And my assumption is these will be on the shelf very, very soon. This is the Crescent Bolt Biter. I've got it in an impact nut driver and extractor set on both a shorty and a long version. I personally would uh, put the long versions in my tool case, but this one's nice because it's got a bunch of different sizes. Okay, next up from DMF Lighting. I'm a big fan of DMF. Uh, they gave us a presentation in our office about a year ago, and I've got a, my very first project of them going now. This is brand new from them. They've got some uh, real nice modern looking pendants out there. But if you're not familiar with the brand, I actually was out on the job site with the rep uh, two weeks ago. And let's actually cut to the video uh, of the DMF rep talking us through their line. Hey guys, Matt Reisinger from The Build Show. I've got Nathan on one of my jobs and we just installed this H-series recess can system from DMF Lighting. Nathan, I wanted to have you give us a quick rundown between H-series, M-series, and your new X-series. Can you help us understand the differences? H-series is really our value line of recess down lights. Easy to rough in, one-handed install, and it's got a lot of features. So first thing you might notice, it's very minuscule, but you've got some of these laser leveling notches here. That's nice. So this comes into play when you wanna get all of these things super lined up. The other thing you've got is versatility. So you've got the bar hanger system. Then the other version that you've got, we've actually got our three inch housing here. You've got these little legs that can align on the side of the joist. You've got two of those and then installed with the screws. So you've yeah, got a screw and version our, and a this, bar hanger version. This is our screw hanger right here. That worked out real nice. Pretty nice for a value-oriented line. Now talk to me about the modules and the trims that come with that line. The first thing you'll notice is you've got a field-selectable lumen switch here. Okay. So you've got 350 lumens, 750 lumens, and 1,000 lumens. Wow. You can see here we've got it set to our 1,000 lumen setting. And when we dim this module down to about 50%, you can see the warm dimming curve kick yeah. in. Dims flawlessly down to 5%, and the low end Kelvin temperature is 2200. Oh, wow. All right, now next up is the M series, which definitely looks like there's been some engineering done here. You can tell that your founder was uh, an electrician or an installer, because look, your screws are pre-drilled in here. There's no grabbing something out of your pouch. You can see in here there are two wing nuts pre-installed as ready and it gives you yep. over an inch of vertical play. That's pretty cool. Either so way. So we can move this housing later. So for your LED modules that we've got here, right, what you just picked up right now is the adjustable module. So if you want a, an adjustable uh, module, cool. that comes available in the, that's you know, right. in the M series, ah, gotcha. right? And Ooh, then if you cool. want a fixed module, you've also got that as well. That's neat. So then the only other thing to talk about on M-Series is the trims. So you can see here, there it becomes in square and round. Mm -hmm. You've got pinhole options, you've got wall wash options, you've got lots of different colors. You've got clear diffuse, warm diffuse. This is your X-Series, correct? That's correct. Uh, so a little bit bigger of a housing, but in fact a little bit smaller of a fixture, right? The smaller you go in the aperture in terms of what the homeowner 
actually sees, mm -hmm. the larger housing you have, Got right? It. This is still a single person install. We want all of our fixtures to be able to serve, be serviced below the ceiling even after finish. So there is an aircraft cable that we have, you know, mechanically engineered into the housing. So in order to access that splice box, you just pull that aircraft cable and then you've got access into the housing. After the drywall gets laid flat, this collar just pushes flush against the drywall. And then you've got this dust cap and you know, small adjuster that you screw flush to the drywall. You know, the groove teeth eats into it and seats it very nicely. Cool. Then you've got a dust cap to secure the housing for when they come through and paint. But after you are finished with rough and you're ready to finish, you fish out that quick connect. You install the trim. See if I can install, look at that. I could have been a Piece of cake. Then you install your quick connect here. And then the entire driver and trim assembly gets fished and pushed through the collar. That's pretty cool. Talk to me about this. So at DMF, we do have a line of cylinders. Now the light module is actually the same module that's used in the M series. Okay. You've got both a down light and an up light. You can see here on the chassis on the top, it's got three little stems here. Mm -hmm. Now the way these are engineered, if you actually, actually hold that up against the surface up here, there's no shadow. So this comes in a cord mount configuration, a stem mount configuration. Mm. You've got different links. I like that. And look how easy it is to pop those out and change that. So you can probably get all kinds of different Configurations. Uh, configurations or looks out of that same fixture. And these are available in different colors too, that sort of thing? Absolutely, different different colors, different finishes. Nathan, thank you so much for coming out to the job site. My pleasure, Matt, Guys, thanks for having me. you can learn more about any of this stuff on the website, which is? DMFlighting.com. Easy enough, we'll see you next time. Next up, let me talk about TrustCore. Lydia Drywall Shorty introduced this to me at the uh, International Builder Show, I think two years ago, and I actually got a chance to use it in my shed just recently. If you're not familiar, this is a drywall alternative. It actually goes up a lot like vinyl siding, but they offer it in smooth in two different colors. They also offer it in a version that uh, turns your wall into uh, a slat wall. And I use it in my shed and I gotta say, it is a really quick and easy way to get a finished wall that also, by the way, is gonna be waterproof. You could even hose it down Reminds me a, a little of an uh, agricultural kind of horse barn, horse stall type material that's real rugged, will take a beating, never needs to be painted, and goes on really, really easily. So I got a chance to use that in my, shell, the, in my shed. The only downside, though, is it's not an inexpensive product. Uh, you know, it's up there in the cost per square foot range. But the beauty of it is install it, you're totally done. There's no painting, there's no fuss. And I think it's gonna be a really durable product. I think it'd be a great choice for a garage, especially a garage retrofit or renovation uh, project where you had an old you know, 30, 40 year old garage that looks crappy. It'd be super easy to put this up in a weekend. And a relatively uh, uh, smart carpenter could really do this project in a super fast basis. There's nothing to it. Very impressive little product. Okay, next up, deck to wall spacers. I saw these guys at the JLC show and what a genius product. In the past, I've used all kinds of things for spacing my deck ledgers off the wall. But if you're not familiar, uh, the reason why we always wanna space our deck ledgers off is because often when we find in older houses where that deck ledger is up against the wall, if water came down to that deck ledger, we're gonna rot the rim board off the house. And I've even seen some pictures online of decks that have had failures because of rot in that section. So in the past, I've used a stacked pair of uh, washers. Uh, I'm trying to think what other options I've done in the past. But this is glass-filled polypropylene, uh, totally crush resistant. You're gonna put this on the back side of your ledger. They've got some nice little pre-placed screw holes so you can screw these on. Then you're gonna drill them so that you can actually put your lags or whatever uh, uh, structural anchors you're going to put on to anchor that and now you've got that space for both draining and drying remember david nicastro i've talked about this quote a million times if it can't dry it's going to die really important to have that space on the back side of the house i saw these uh, online available for something like two dollars ish a piece and you can buy them in 50 100 packs uh, i think you might even be able to buy these individually on in some places online but that is some really cheap insurance and what a genius little product. 
Deck2Wall.com is the uh, website for these guys. Next up, another uh, product that I saw at the JLC show. Uh, Jim, who is the owner of Door Stud, if you've not seen this product, it looks like a little uh, rollerblade carriage for doors. And he actually came out to the job site at my house under construction and showed this product to me, I don't know, two, three years ago when I was hanging doors. And I got to say, when I was there with Patrick and Jorge and a couple of other of my carpenters, they immediately said, man, this would make life so much easier. It's basically a little carriage that fits underneath an interior door so that the weight of the door is carried by this uh, door stud uh, tool, I guess, for lack of a better term. You can roll that door around. You can micro adjust it for height. And, you know, whether you're doing new construction or let's say you're taking a door slab and fitting that into an existing hole, oh my gosh, what a change. Not very expensive. Total back saver. Whether you're a young carpenter or an old carpenter, I can see you absolutely loving these and having a pair uh, in two. They have two different sizes. They have a size that'll fit kind of all the kind of standard doors. And they have a bigger size that's really made for more commercial and thicker doors. And by the way, they will make a custom one if you need it. I actually have uh, a lot of hidden doors on my jobs uh, that tend to be pretty thick. You know, inch and three quarter doors that get clad again uh, with a three quarter material. So some of my doors could be two and a half to three and a quarter thick. They actually made me a custom uh, one of these as well. So really good people. Again, family owned business by a smart carpenter who found a solution for a problem he was having out in the field. Okay, next up on new products, Aquor. You've seen me use their hose bibs. These are those really slick hose bibs. Here's the website right here, that when the flap is down, you really have no idea it's a hose bib, but the actual mechanism that turns the hose on is attached to your hose. It's like an attachment, basically, so that uh, not only does it look sleek, but it's going to turn the water on inside the wall and be frost-free. Uh, the thing I also like about these is that they're made from stainless steel, so they conduct very little heat to the inside compared to, let's say, a brass silcock. But here's what's new from these guys, which I really like. They have all kinds of mounting block options now. If we go to their website, we're going to hit mounting solutions. Check this out. You can get them in wood, and I, I want to say this might even be teak. Let's see here. Yeah, teak. I mean, come on. So cool. Okay, so besides the teak, though, they've got them in stainless steel, just bare stainless, or a matte black stainless. But what I wanted to show you was this right here. They've got these mounting boxes, both in black and stainless. So, for instance, if you're doing a brick project, you want to be able to mount that box to the front of the brick. And in the past, uh, you might have had to make one out of, let's say, a press-treated block or something. But now you can actually buy these stainless ones from them and you're gonna match the box depth to the cladding depth. So if you've got a three inch, a three inch brick, let's say, with a one inch air gap, that means that that thing needs to be four inches off the face of your sheathing. Or if you're using, uh, you know, let's say a hardy plank siding, you could also use these, you just use the thinner version, and then you could just butt your siding to that and you have this really cool stainless mounting plate, which by the way, you can see on the photo here, has precision machined holes already tapped so the screws will just mount right in there. How cool is that? Now they're not inexpensive. It's what is 65 bucks, let's say, but 65 bucks for a mounting plate made out of stainless steel that's pre-machined, not bad. I mean, if you were gonna make a mounting block out of uh, cedar, let's say, you might spend 30 minutes making each mounting block and what's your time worth, and you got to go source the cedar, that sort of thing. So you can see these aren't inexpensive, but man, they would be really, really slick on a custom home. And again, when that flap is down on these uh, aquars, you really have no idea what this is. Your, your friends walking up don't realize immediately that that's a hose bib. So they can be in very public places and look really nice on the house. Okay, last thing I want to mention, this is not necessarily a new product, but I did a uh, three drywall tips video and I got a bunch of comments from people about uh, that saying that they wanted to know uh, what are the profiles I've used in the past from Trimtex and I wanted to mention that this sample box which I showed I think briefly in the video this is available for you as a builder or a modeler or an architect 
so that you could actually pull these samples out and go, all right, I need a J bead for my house to do an inexpensive reglet detail, let's say, to separate uh, my steel windows from my drywall or whatever. These guys will ship this to you. I'll put a link in the description to Trimtex. They'll give you your catalog. They're gonna send this in a box. They're gonna give you all their corner bead options. Really, really good people. And they have reps all over the US so they can actually meet you out on the job site. They met me and my drywall contractor out there the day we got started on my actual house. Uh, and they're just really, really easy to work with. So anyways, all the stuff we talked about today, uh, I'll have the link in the description. I'm realizing I forgot one item at the front of the table. I totally forgot this. I shot a video uh, with a pro fisherman recently where we got a chance to look at his house. And one of the things I noticed on his house, I feel like I'm noticing a lot, and that's this piece right here, a missing kickout flashing. Now I ran across these guys at the JLC show. It was on my very last day, uh, literally in my last few minutes. and. This is called AmericanFlashings.com. They make all these kickout flashings in right hand and left hand in vinyl, uh, so they'll be resistant to the sun's rays. They make them in all these colors, so you could use this with really a variety of sidings, a variety of roofing materials. But how cool is that? This is the uh, left hand or maybe right hand model, all preformed and ready to go. And the idea is water running down that wall, you know, above this is gonna be uh, your step flashing. Water running down that wall is gonna hit this, this preformed kick out flash and look how far it's kicking out from the wall. It's kicking it out three or four inches, kicking it right into the gutter. I'm not sure if they stock these uh, locally for you. I suspect they probably have these at the roofing supply house, but you can find out more at American Flashings. Dot com. With that being said, another episode down of new products and new tools. If I'm missing something, or there's something that you guys think I should know about that's a new product or a new tool, I'll have our email address that you can email that to us. Or of course, uh, if you got something cool, send it to my, uh, to my office. Here's our office address as well. Guys, big thanks to you for all your support. It was super fun at JLC to run across so many of you that have supported the channel and of course supported our website, buildshownetwork.com. We've got, if you don't know already, we've got 12 new videos a week publishing over on buildshownetwork.com. I'll have a link in the description for our email newsletter that you can sign up for. And my team will send you an email every Tuesday and every Friday because a lot of the stuff that I talked about today, you're gonna see our contributors using, doing, uh, teaching on a regular basis. Uh, we've got several tradespeople. Uh, we've got builders, remodelers. We even have one architect shooting videos. Uh, from the architect's desk. This is a really, really cool group of people, and you should definitely be watching those videos. But in the meantime, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on TikTok or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.